Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranakhat, West Bengal, India. In this video, we are going to see management of a posterior polar cataract. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. And now, the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Methyl cellulose is applied over the cornea for better visibility. A side port is made on the left side of the main incision, about 3 clock hours away. And now, capsulorexis. Capsulorexis is being done with a utreta forceps. The utreta goes in, the closed prongs makes a puncture at the center, goes towards 3 o'clock. A capsular tag is raised. This capsular tag is guided anticlockwise to get an adequate size rexis of about 5.25 millimeter. Hydrodelineation is done. Hydrodissection is not done. Now I take a spatula, you know, some more visco is injected, and now I take a spatula and do hydrofree dissection from 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock. some more visco and now is the time to introduce the phaco needle. The phaco needle goes in, the nucleus is lifted up and it is emulsified. The epinuclear shell is remaining. Now I try to remove the epinuclear shell. I could not remove the epinuclear shell, but I inject some visco and come out. there is already a rent in the posterior capsule, but no vitreous prolapse into the anterior chamber. I try to remove the epinucleus by the Simco cannula. Till now, vitreous is behind, no vitreous prolapse till now. And I have been able to remove the epinucleus. Now I inject visco. I can see the rent. So I am going to do dry aspiration of the cortex. Steel irrigation is on. The side board is small for introduction of the Simco cannula. I 
And now, Visco has been injected and I have started dry aspiration of the cortex. I took some pieces in the syringe. I aspirate the cortex and flush out the cortex. The BSS helps in flushing out the cortex. Till now, the rent is there, but no vitreous prolapse. Enlarge the main wound by 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 millimeter. So, the size of the main wound is now 3 to 3.1 millimeter. Cortical cleanup is done. And now I can see the rent has extended superiorly. So I take the iterator forceps, hold the upper part, and convert this rent into a posterior CCC, posterior continuous curvilinear capsular axis. Inject visco and implant a sensor multipiece intraocular lens in the capsular bag. Since the posterior rexis is small, this lens will be nicely in place in the capsular bag. Here it goes. Both the haptics are in the capsular bag. Used a Sinsky hook. And now I am going to do a bit of vitrectomy. This is dry vitrectomy without irrigation through the main wound. Intermittent irrigation and cutting and aspiration. If I irrigate continuously, there will be vitreous prolapse in the anterior chamber. So, this is a nice technique, intermittent irrigation and cutting and aspiration. The cut rate was 3000 per minute. And now I injected diluted kinacot and making another side port at eight o'clock. And now I 
irrigation through left side port and aspiration through the right. Some fibers are probably there using the cutter at that point. And now this is moxifloxacin. No, this is pilocarpin. But it is taking time for constriction of the people. This is removal of the, the antechamber lavas that removes the air bubbles that are sticking to the corneal endothelium. Very good red glow. The antechamber is very nicely formed. This is moxifloxacin. The side port is closed by stromal hydration. I did not put any suture to the main wound. because I was sure that it is a nicely self-sealing wound. The integrity of the wound is checked, the case is concluded. Post-op pictures after 24 hours. Cornea is clear, no corneal edema at all. Antichamber is quiet, visual acuity is 6 by 12 unaided. This is disc, this is macula. Patient is very happy. Thank you very much for your attention.